I'm going to get so much hate for this video. My heart rate is actually high. I'm so nervous. And I've actually tried filming this video several times already, but I'm just so nervous. I keep tripping over my words. And it's so silly that I'm nervous because I'm just trying to tell you guys the truth. We need to stop the carnivore diet. So if you don't know what a carnivore diet is, it is a diet that's super popular right now and it only allows meat and low lactose animal products. Things like butter, eggs, tallow, bone marrow, nothing like yogurt, milk, ice cream, for sure not. I have seen so much information lately on like Instagram and TikTok and everything about the carnivore diet and it's getting more and more popular. Or maybe I'm just changing my algorithm for it to show me more carnivore stuff because I keep watching it because it's so interesting. But still, I feel like it's gaining popularity and it's really concerning how much support the carnivore diet has. Now listen, I have a background in nutrition. I am on my way to becoming a full-blown dietitian in 2025 so that's super exciting but i'm not a full-blown dietitian yet so take this with a grain of salt and i say this because i'm trying to tell you guys i'm not an advocate or a hater of any specific kind of diet because the biggest takeaway from this video is that nutrition is individualized there is not one black and white way to have good nutrition and so i'm for vegan vegetarianism omnivore atkins keto all of it because there are ways you can get optimal nutrition and make it fit into whatever lifestyle or diet you want and that's the job of the dietitian or the nutritionist is to help you get enough nutrition in whatever works for you however however that's exactly the problem with the carnivore diet is that it is so limiting it's such a strict diet that there are harmful effects to doing it and that's what i'm here to tell you about today so that you don't go into this diet misinformed but before i do that let me tell you the pros of the carnivore diet because there are pros and we can't deny that there are pros and we can't deny that anecdotes of people do show that people do feel better, they lose weight, they are thriving on the carnivore diet, but not for long. So let's get into this. <laughs> so the pros of a carnivore diet is, number one, you have great balanced blood sugar. Because you're eating so much protein and so much fat and virtually no carbs at all, your blood sugar is super stable. The metabolism of fat and proteins are a lot steadier than carbs, which are a lot quicker. You get energy much faster from carbs and therefore your blood glucose goes up faster and down faster than if you eat protein and fat. So because you're eating pretty much all protein and fat, your blood glucose is super stable. And that is a big part of why I believe people feel way better on the carnivore diet is because their blood sugar is so nice and steady. A second pro of the carnivore diet is that you don't have any gastrointestinal discomfort from fiber. That doesn't mean that fiber is bad though. I saw one carnivore influencer, that's what I'm going to call it, um, on Instagram that said that fiber is a gut irritant and that just, that's just, uh, <laughs> I cannot with that one. But yes, too much fiber, too much of the wrong kinds of fiber, too much fiber introduced all at once can all cause gastrointestinal upset. And so there are ways to mitigate this because fiber is good. It's so good for your gut. Your gut bacteria loves it and it regulates your whole system. Let's not pretend fiber is bad for you because it's not. And in other people, things might be getting confused with fiber being a problem in the diet is the fact that it's an extreme elimination diet. So you're getting rid of maybe some food intolerances or food sensitivities that you may didn't know that you had. So it may be a single food sensitivity or single food intolerance that you have and you just got rid of everything so you don't really know what it is, but now you feel suddenly better because you got rid of that one food sensitivity or one food intolerance. And so that's an issue because now maybe you think fiber is bad or maybe you think that fruits and vegetables are bad when they're not. <laughs> and so another thing is the FODMAPs, which is an acronym for a whole bunch of compounds that give some people gastrointestinal discomfort. And they're found in a whole bunch of plant foods like beans, onions, garlic, shallots. There's a whole list of them. You can look up FODMAPs online and you'll learn a whole lot more about them. But some of these foods contain short carbohydrate compounds that are not really easily digestible by the small intestine. So because they're so resistant to digestion, it can cause some people to feel some gastrointestinal discomfort. And so to ease that discomfort, you eliminate that one food or you limit that one food. You don't even have to eliminate it. It depends. FODMAPs are usually more for IBS, people with IBS, but a lot of people don't know they have IBS because it's a syndrome. It's not really diagnosable. There's no one way to tell that you have IBS. So it's a little bit of a gray area, but if you do have just one food sensitivity or intolerance, then you are gonna feel way better if you eliminate literally the entire plant kingdom. So what I'm saying is it's not the meat and eggs and saturated fat that are healing you. It's the fact that you just don't feel 
bad anymore from the one intolerance or couple maybe that you have from plant foods. And it's a little bit of a tedious task to figure out what foods you're sensitive to, but imagine all the variety you can have in your diet again if you figure it out. You don't have to eliminate everything to feel better. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that's a big one. And then another pro to the carnivore diet is weight loss. Weight loss is apparently pretty easy on the carnivore diet. I think it's because you feel full and satisfied with all that protein and fat that you naturally eat less. It lasts longer in your system, so there you go, less calories for more satiation, 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 fullness. And then the last pro to the carnivore diet is that it's easy to follow because it's so strict. And I think this is probably one of the most appealing facets about the carnivore diet because it's a lot easier to limit yourself to just animal products and not just animal products, but low lactose animal products than to try and achieve a balanced diet because achieving a balanced diet is hard, you guys. It's really hard when there are so many options out there. So once you eliminate most food groups, then it's really easy to stick to a diet. So I think that's really appealing to some people who have maybe struggled with diets in the past. So those are the pros. There's a lot of them, but they do not override the cons. So let me get into the cons and why we should stop the carnivore diet. Number one, and this is, I think the most obvious one, is that there are no fruits and vegetables in the carnivore diet. You cannot tell me that fruits and vegetables do not belong in a healthy diet. They do, you need fruits and vegetables, period. Now the common argument to this is the fiber thing, which is weird, and then organ meats. Organ meats are so healthy, so so healthy for you. They contain pretty much all the vitamins and minerals you could ever want. And then other people say you can just take a supplement. Well, number one, why would you take a supplement when you can just eat whole foods? The thing with nutrition is that whole foods are always, always, always going to be better than a supplement. So you're kind of cheating when you take a plant supplement on the carnivore diet. It's like, why would you do that? Just eat plants. And then the other thing with organ meats is Number one, are you going to eat organ meat every day? Are you going to eat it in the right quantities every day? Are you concerned about missing out on phytochemicals and antioxidants in your diet? Are you missing out on getting more opportunities to get better nutrition from fruits and vegetables because you have so much more variety when you have fruits and vegetables in your diet than if you just have organ meat to eat. Also phytochemicals are, they're not like a cause and effect type of thing, like vitamins and minerals. Like yes, when you take vitamin D or when you eat vitamin D, you will have better bone density, things like that. Phytochemicals aren't cause and effect like that, but they have been shown to be linked to lower incidences of cancer, cardiovascular disease, things like that. They are really good for you and they are characteristic of fruits and vegetables. That's what gives them their color. Like what makes a tomato red is lycopene. What makes an onion white is another one. I don't remember the name. But there are things unique to fruits and vegetables that you can't find in a carnivore diet is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's a big one. Let me make sure I'm still Rolling. Yep, I'm still rolling. Number two con is long-term ketosis is not great. I don't know if many people realize it, but the carnivore diet is just an extreme keto diet. The keto diet typically restricts your carbohydrate intake to under 50 grams or under 25 grams per day, depending on how strict you wanna go. And it is a high fat, moderate protein, low carb type of diet. The carnivore diet is more like high protein, high fat, but they're similar in the fact that they both can get you into ketosis. And ketosis is a state when your body breaks down fatty acids acids incompletely, your body cannot break down fatty acids well into glucose, but your body needs to break something down into glucose or a glucose-like thing because your brain only uses glucose. Or your brain can use ketones, which is the byproduct of the incomplete breakdown of fatty acids. So those ketones can pass the blood-brain barrier and give your brain energy because your brain does not function on anything but glucose. So that's the catch here is that the rest of your body can function off of broken down protein and fat, but your brain needs those ketones to run. And the problem with ketones is that they're actually kind of toxic in high levels. So your liver works hard and your kidneys work hard to get rid of excess ketones after a long time. So that's why ketosis is not recommended long term. And of course, all of this is still being studied, but that is what we know right now. So the takeaway from that is you're straining your liver and kidneys over time to try to get rid of those ketones built up in the blood. And that's also another reason why you lose weight so well on the carnivore diet and why a lot of people gain that weight back when they get off of the carnivore diet is because you're losing water weight from your body trying to flush out those ketones and the carbs that you're not eating anymore are not holding on to that water because carbs are really good at holding on to water. So once you have no more carbs in your system, you have no more carbs to hold on to water. So the water leaves also. 
Oh, and I also forgot to mention that the process of ketosis, the process of breaking down fatty acids and then the byproduct of ketones does help you lose fat because you're literally breaking down fat. So yes, that also helps you lose weight is the fact that you are now in ketosis in the carnivore diet. So yeah. The third con about the carnivore diet and why we should stop the carnivore diet is the fact that protein is also hard on your liver and kidneys. So when you eat an excess of protein, which is really easy to do on the carnivore diet, because that's like almost all you're eating, then your liver and kidneys have to work harder to process those nitrogenous compounds. And long term, that can contribute to chronic diseases, which you don't want because they are chronic, meaning long time or lifetime. So yeah, that's the other thing. And then the fifth, fourth, fifth, I don't know, whatever con to the carnivore diet is the saturated fat. And this is one that's really interesting and that a lot of carnivores like to argue about is the fact that sugar is the problem for your cardiovascular health and not fat. Now here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm not denying the fact that sugar is not good for you. Definitely in excess, it's not good for you. Carnivores say that sugar is sticky and it makes things stick to your arteries and stuff, which I don't know enough about all that. Let's be honest here. I don't know exactly for sure, but what I do know for sure is that saturated fat is also not good for your cardiovascular health. In fact, it is the worst fat for your cardiovascular health. And this is really interesting. The reason being is that the chemical structure of a saturated fat is straight. It's straight like this. While unsaturated fat from like avocados and olive oil have fats that have kinks in them like this because they have double bonds that make it kink. So saturated fats are like this. Unsaturated from plant foods are like kink. At least one kink. There can be more. It just depends on the fat. But because saturated fats are straight like this, then they stack. They stack. So when you have a lot of them going through the bloodstream, such as when you eat a lot of butter or a lot of red meat, like in the carnivore diet, then they can get caught on each other and stack, stack, stack. And that's when you get an artery that's about this big. This big meaning like almost closed and then you have a heart attack. So that's why saturated fat is not good for your arteries. And I don't know why people are saying saturated fat is not the problem. Um, I really don't. And then another thing that I've personally gotten on my last carnivore diet is bad video is that the fact that I went to school for nutrition and that dietitians everywhere are not valid is <laughs> the fact that nutrition education in the US is backed by big companies like Coca-Cola or Big Pharma or things like that. And so they have an agenda to try to push their products out or push some kind of nutrition agenda out. So that's what they teach in US schools. Now, I'm not denying that either. That is very well possible. However, what I'm saying is you can't deny that fruits and vegetables are good for you. You can't deny that proteins puts a strain on your kidneys and liver. You see what I'm saying? It's like you just completely bypassed the point and insulted me instead of looked at the facts. But anyway, so I'm not denying that carnivores feel better. They're losing weight. They've cleared their acne, whatever. I'm not denying that there are pros to the carnivore diet because there are. But what I'm saying is the pros do not outweigh the cons. So no fruits and vegetables, the strain on your liver and kidneys, and a lot of saturated fat are the three big cons to this diet. Please tell me in the comments what you think of the carnivore diet. Leave me a hate comment. Leave me a love comment. Tell me what you're thinking right now because I am so curious what's going on in everybody's head. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe if you like nutrition and lifestyle content. I'm always trying to look for self betterment. This is something that I could talk about forever, but I should probably go now. Those are the key points. I hope you learned something today and I hope you have an open mind and I hope things go well for you in your lifestyle and your diet. I am so happy to talk with you in the comments. So yes, please let me know and I will see you next time.